Hi Cubies, here's Alexander again, and today we want to have a look at the painting tutorial for Deathwing Terminator. So I've went ahead and built the middle, uh, the miniature. I've cleaned all the mold lines, and uh, for creating the base, I uh, just glued on a piece of stone here, and uh, I already uh, glued in some sand. I will now go ahead and prime this miniature. And um, as a side note, this year will be a, sl a slightly different approach on a Deathwing Terminator than uh, you would normally expect. So if you want uh, the normal warmer uh, uh, color transition from, uh, from a brown tone to a bleached bone and white, then you should probably go uh, click here now on the Terminator. Um, this link will bring you to the... Uh, painting tutorial, a very old one from me, the um, Ultra Dark Fist Death Templar video. And uh, on this video I explain how to uh, paint the bone color on a, a well, <laughs> normal Space Marine, but uh, you could also apply this to a Terminator. Well, but for this tutorial I will go now ahead and spray prime this here in grey. Uh, from Army Painter I use the pr spray primer. <coughs> go ahead here a uh, uniform gray. So I'll be right back when he's primed. There I'm back and as you can see he's primed. Well <coughs> obviously the color didn't change much but on the base you can see that he is primed. So and uh, what I will do now is uh, take devil and mat and give the whole miniature a good solid wash to give the first shadows on the whole miniature. So very easy step. Take a big brush and simply go over the whole miniature with a Devlin mud. Let this uh, completely dry and then we are ready for step number two. So be right back. Now that the Devlin mud is dry we can go on with the paint job and for our first base color we take a 50-50 mix out of uh, Calfarm Brown and Deneb Stone. So the color looks like that. And now we simply paint on that color. And as usual, we leave the recesses that we previously painted with a Devlin mud <coughs> behind so we have nice shadow colors. The color is a little bit watered down, but not too much, so this is just the first base coat and this should be <coughs> quite covering. So, just paint it on. And this is a very easy step. I will skip ahead now and show you the mini when this base coat is done. Okay, there we are. You can see how I have uh, painted on a nice even coat of the Caltham Brown Deneb Stone mix and here uh, in the recesses we have all the dark areas from the Devlin mud. So and now I show you how to highlight this whole miniature and I will uh, demonstrate you that uh, on this area here so let's zoom in there. Okay. <coughs> um, here we have uh, the previous color and here we have bleached bone. And what I will do now is take a little bit of this color over to this that side here. And then I grab some of the bleached bone and mix it in. <coughs> so make it a little bit more liquid and uh, this is a little bit too bright, so a little bit more from the old color. Uh, like that. Okay. So, now I take the color on the brush. <coughs> and what I will do now is I paint in the color downwards. And you see the color is quite liquid. It uh, runs down here. So we get a nice 
color transition. And uh, here, the, the edge, I'm uh, feathering a little bit. Uh, so a, a rough edge that uh, increases the <coughs> uh, the color transition from uh, from a far distance. So now we let that dry and we will mix up now an even brighter variant. So take a little bit of beach bone and something from that color into here. So okay, so a drop of water. That's okay. <coughs> and now we do the same again. But leave a little bit of the other color also behind and also slightly rough edge. So, see? <coughs> now we take almost pure bleached bone just a little bit of the other color in there. Water down a little bit. So, like that. <coughs> and with that color, we highlight even more. Like the lowest area here. You see? Now we get a nice color transition from a dark to a bright. Oh, okay. <coughs> there I touched a different surface. So, and with that, um, we can go even further now and take a little bit of white into this big bone mix. So. Like that. <coughs> and with that, I highlight the edge. Okay, and I can also do there. And there. <coughs> and done. So, with that, I will paint now the whole Terminator. Be right back. Okay, Cubies. So he does look now after the highlighting. And I hope this pleases you. Well, this is uh, a good tabletop standard. Well, you can see the transitions, but uh, <coughs> from, uh, let me say, 20 centimeter uh, away, you can't notice the transition so heavy and that's okay for the tabletop. <coughs> what I will do now is uh, painting the bolter case and the chest eagle and the uh, power fist in orchide shade. Also one of the foundation paints. <coughs> well, uh, in some of the publications from Games Workshop the Deathwing Terminators have red bolter cases and red chest eagles. Um, in some they have green ones. Um, I personally like um, for Dark Angels Army um, the green ones better because, well, it gives a better uh, connection to the other troops. So uh, I would stick with the green weapons. So just uh, painting on this color now. And I'm back when this is done. Okay, the green parts are painted now and now I will go on and highlight those with a 50-50 mix of snot green and orchid shade. Just paint it over and leave a little bit of the orchid shade in the recesses back behind to have a nice shadow. And then we have a nice highlight. So that's the bolter case. And now let's go for the eagle. Slightly brush over it. <coughs> Just 
just like that. Keep in mind, to don't have <coughs> too much color on the brush when you do uh, performing that kind of highlight. Uh, and try to avoid to hit the surfaces you have already painted. Uh, let's repair the damage quickly. Mm. Let's see if I have a little bit of the old color still. Yeah, there we go. Okay, damage fixed. <coughs> now I'll go on with the power fist. There also, just go over it and leave a little bit of the dark green tone behind. Be right back. Now we can go on with highlighting even more by putting even more of the snot green into the green mix. A little bit watered down. And then go on with the highlighting. Like that. There we go. Then also here on the power fist. here from the fingers and that should do it for the fist yeah I think so <coughs> and now again for the chest ego so we go. Now let's take a look at some of the gold parts of this miniature. Mm. So for example here, this part here, then the uh, skulls here and here on the bolter, then uh, here this entire thing. Um, I will also paint in gold. Yeah. So and for that instance we will cover now these areas in tin bits first. Why tin bits? Uh, well, you need a nice uh, underground color for gold, and uh, for that instance, you have uh, some options. Option number one is a brown background. Option number two is a tin bits background, and option number three would be a mix out of uh, brown and gold or brown and tin bits. So. But for that instance, I just use tin bits. Just simply paint it on, on all the areas that need to be gold. Okay, be right back. Okay, the tin bits areas are now covered, and now I will go ahead and paint over that with my uh, own gold recipe. This is a mixture of dwarf browser, tin bits, and shining gold and as you can see that covers quite well over the tin bits just simply paint it over it so and the next step would be to highlight that with pure shining gold or burnished gold whatever gold you prefer to use it actually doesn't matter. There we 
we go. So, and to uh, enrich the gold tone even more, <coughs> we can go over it with a uh, Griffon sepia. When I manage to find the pot here. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. I have it. Uh, what a mess on my painting table. <laughs> So, but finally I've got it. So just simply go over it with Griffon sepia wash. This will enrich the tone of the gold and make it pop out even more. So, there we go. Now let's see where we are headed. Okay, the gold parts are done, the green parts are done, the bleach bone parts are done. I think it's time for the metal. So I will get my trusty handy dandy dark steel mix. This is a 50-50 mix out of Borka metal and Chaos Black. And no, you can't buy this, you have to mix it on your own. But as you can see, I have uh, mixed a whole pot out of it. So, just simply paint on all the parts that need to be silver in this dark metal color. So, and as usual, I'm back in a second. Now that the metal parts are all in the uh, dark, nice metal tone, we will highlight them with chainmail. Just simply go over them. Oh, and by the way, I have uh, checked all the <coughs> transfer sheets here from the Space Marines I have laying around, and strangely, there are Dark Angel uh, icons here, and also uh, icons for the Ravenwing, but no icon for the Deathwing. So, and uh, the only Deathwing uh, symbol I've found is this here on the um, vehicle transfer sheet. And I hope that this uh, here is not too big for the shoulder pad here. So, that's my only one. Otherwise, I have to, uh, uh, well, use something different, but a uh, white <coughs> transfer on a almost white background, uh, that doesn't fit right. So, uh, I'll uh, go on now and uh, paint the silver parts in chainmail and I'll be right back for you. Okay, now that the silver parts are done, it's time to give this model a little bit of red dots here and there. <coughs> so, here are the purities here. Uh, I will cover now in a mixture of macrite red and black. It's a really dark red tone, as you can see. Just paint it on. And be patient. Don't rush through the painting. So, okay. Now I will cover the eyes, and for that I will take off the arms real quick. Yes, I haven't glued them on already. <laughs> so, uh, focus, okay. Just patiently painting in the red. Another one. Okay. There we go. Now this little trickers up here. There we go. So <coughs> now we have to highlight this red spots, and for that uh, I'm taking 
some blood red into the paint. <coughs> so starting again with the purity seal. Just here a little on the edges. Keep a little bit of the dark red behind so you can see that it is highlighted. Also here at the eye, I will paint now the middle line here. And Terminator eye is a little bit different to paint than a Space Marine eye because it has uh, actually shape to it. Then uh, Space Marine eye is just a, well, a hole in the helmet. Just barely go over it, so like that. <coughs> then here, this little tracker, I will paint now the lower half, like that. Okay, now I go for pure blood red. So. Up here on the purity seal. Okay, <coughs> now I'll paint in a really nice red dot here into the eye and you see how it directly pops out. So same on the other side like that. Okay, and also one red spot there, and there, mm, a little bit more, just like that, okay, so let me check if there's anything else to paint. Well, yeah, here yeah, the purity seal. Okay, this one I will paint now in a different approach than the armor, so it uh, pops out a little bit more. So for that, I will undercoat it now in bestial brown. By the way, uh, well, the real Dark Angel players out there uh, shouldn't have uh, the big problem uh, with the with the transfer because, uh, well, <laughs> you probably have the uh, upgrade kit for the Dark Angels and there are shoulder pads for Terminators in there, and uh, so well. You don't have that problem, but I don't have that upgrade kit here, and so I have to work with the stuff I have here. So, this is now painted in bestial brown. Now I will mix up uh, a 50-50 mix of bleach bone and bestial brown. So. <coughs> or you could uh, use a dwarf flesh for that, you see it. Painting over it and keep in mind to leave a little bit of the brown in the recesses. So. Just like that. So now I go for pure bleach bone. Now well, the paint is still wet, but that doesn't matter. Just making a little wet blending here. Again, <coughs> bleach 
bone now. Just like that. Okay, I think that's enough. I want to leave that to dry now, and then I come back and paint in some script work. Be right back. This is dry now, and what I will use now is a Edding 1800 0.1. This is a very, very fine pen, and I hope this time he will work. So, yeah, this time it works. Just paint in some scrolling lines and the script work is done Ta -da! well the last things to do on this model uh, is making the base and making the shorter pad so I will start with the base um, I have previously uh, painted it on with uh, the Devlin Mud wash uh, right at the beginning and what I will do now is uh, making a dry brush of Commando Khaki over the sand. Just an easy step. So, okay, done. Now I will mix up uh, some Codex Grey and Commando Khaki and go over the stone part. Slightly dry brushing. Oh, well, actually, that's a heavy dry brush, but uh, okay. Never mind. Just going hard. Don't it, don't it. So. Now I will mix into this color a little bit of skull white. again over it a little bit stippling in there to give it a sorry guys for the hard cut but uh, unfortunately my four gigabyte SD card isn't big enough for my new camera <laughs> so uh, I ran out of space but uh, I just finished here the troubleshoot part well stippling part and uh, now we will uh, give this uh, model a little bit more color on the base because, uh, well, this uh, whole marine is a little bit pale and to compensate that uh, we will give the base some more color. And for that I use uh, some pigments. <clears throat> this time I use uh, the uh, Crater Color Sanguine Powder. This here. This is uh, just pigment powder in a very, very big bottle. But, uh, well, <coughs> just take a little bit of that uh, on your palette, like that, there you see, and uh, add in some water, so, like that, and then uh, we will go <coughs> with that over the shale part of the base. It's like a, a well, <clears throat> like a pigment wash now and it will pick up the <clears throat> gradient underneath so the dry brushing part <clears throat> and give this a little nice orangey reddish tone so but I think that's a little bit too much so I had just <clears throat> put my brush into some water and Go over it again and get rid of a little bit of this. <coughs> so, like that. Yeah, that's nice. So, yeah. And uh, also, I will put in some 
of the Burnt Umber pigments from Vallejo. I normally use for my rust. Here I have some on my palette. So just use some wet brush to get loosen some of the pigment. Well, and also I'm working that into the base now, here and there, to give it a little bit more variation. Okay, <clears throat> I let that dry now and be right back. Okay, now that the base is dry, you see that this is a real nice reddish uh, toned rock now. And to give it a little bit more color, we use now uh, Iceland moss. I have here uh, several different uh, tones, and I think uh, we will pick out some of the red here just. Take a nice thing here, maybe that little thing here. Okay. <coughs> then we need maybe a bright green one like this here. <coughs> Don't make too big chunks. That, that's a good size. Okay. So, and don't <clears throat> overwhelm your miniature with a base work. Just just a little bit is enough. So, where we want uh, to have this uh, little Iceland moss, we will add now white glue to the base. And then we take our tweezers and then, oops, there goes my brush. <laughs> So, and then you uh, just place it on. And dab it into the white glue. So, like that. <coughs> okay, uh, I think next to it I will place directly the orange one. Also, dab of white glue, tweezers. Mm. So here, uh, this under part here is me a little bit too big. So, uh, <coughs> cut off a little bit of this. Okay. Now I will edit. And over that, to cover the transition a little, a little bit better, I will place now some flock. This here is uh, some clump foliage, mixture out of a bright and a dark green tone. And I just use also my tweezers to take a little clump of that, so, and place it right on there. Oh, and press it firmly down. So, like a little bit undergrowth. <coughs> Tap off the excess and voila. I think our base is now complete. Now I will paint up the corner of the base. Uh, I will use black for this, this is uh, absolutely nice neutral color. So, don't need them. Just painting the whole corner. Okay, now let's place the arms back on and see if you have forgotten something on the miniature.
stamped, I think. Well, <coughs> there's nothing left to paint. So now it's time for the deco. Okay, be right back. Okay, there I have now uh, cut out the deco. And what I've done here is I cut right uh, as close as I could uh, to the decal itself. Uh, normally this uh, decal sheet is uh, about here and I cut it right to there. And also I made uh, some little cuts here at the uh, transparent spots so that the uh, uh, whole transfer sheet uh, doesn't warp that much. So here we have some water and I place it right in there to get rid of the paper. So, and the next thing I will do is here, I will prepare now the surface <coughs> and uh, what I will use now here is Microsoft, the decal softener. And I will just place a very thin coat of that <coughs> over the shoulder pad so that uh, the decal gets even uh, soaked from underneath. So, ah, and the decal is loose already. So, I'll pick up the decal with a <coughs> with a brush and also I will dab the brush directly off on the paper so that most of the excess water is already gone. So, place the decal and slide it off the paper. Take away the paper very firmly. Okay, so now it's a matter of very gently moving this decal sheet over the surface. and try not to break this decal. <coughs> so I use now Microsaw to cover the whole decal to soften it and to be able to move it around also a little bit more. Okay, I think that's a good spot. Uh, don't touch it anymore until the decal softener is ready. So. After this is uh, dry, I will uh, cover it with a, a matte varnish and, uh, well, then you can't see it anymore. And, well, this miniature is almost finished. Only thing left to do is painting the bolter holes in black. Mm, I've drilled them out previously. Zip. And zip. And that's it. That's the whole Terminator. I hope you like him. And we see us in the next video. You're Alexandra.